joins us now. Good morning, Samantha. Good morning. Um, we've been asking a question all morning about this. Like, what will Vladimir Putin's response be? What do you think it will be? Well, I've been surprised at the degree of international response, very pleasantly surprised. He will also be surprised, but not so pleasantly. Uh, what basically the international community is doing is saying two things, not one. It's saying, first of all, we don't believe you, Vladimir Putin. Your fingerprints are on this attempted murder. And we, the international community, not just Britain, countries as far apart as Australia, Sweden, Finland, NATO countries, EU countries, uh, have all combined to say... Uh, that this is part of a wider pattern of Russian behavior. Uh, your cyber attacks, your interference in local elections, your attempt to intimidate people around the world. Uh, Putin has basically been acting as a very aggressive uh, and rather ill-informed person, and this is the response. And this response, as you say, a pleasant surprise. It probably came as a pleasant surprise to Theresa May herself, but certainly particularly the American response was a surprise, particularly after Vladimir Putin got a congratulatory telephone call from uh, Donald well, I Trump. I think that may be two, there may be two reasons for that. I think, first of all, that's very much the Trump style uh, to create two single opposite conflicting mm. messages simultaneously in order to confuse the people he's dealing with. It's not a very agreeable style. Well, I'm not sure he thinks it through. I think he just uh, he just well, wavers from one morning to the next. Be, it may be part of the consequence of the arrival of the new uh, uh, Secretary of State, John Bolton. Pompeo and John Bolton, uh, who are both hardliners and been very anti-Putin, anti-Kremlin, in uh, previous incarnations, so they may have had some influence on him. Yes, indeed, there are lots of people being very critical of John Bolt's appointment as National Security Advisor, but actually, I, I, although he is very hawkish, I've, 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 I'm, I'm relatively supportive of him coming in because he, he does actually deal with real politique. Um, but this is it. Is, is this a wake-up call then to the world, what's happened? Because it was a chemical attack. If it had been a drive-by shooting, uh, we were putting this uh, to guests earlier in the show, then perhaps it wouldn't have been the same thing. But the fact that it was the use of chemical weapons on, on British soil, do you think that, that put... That that put Putin beyond the pale and that made it vital for people to act? Or was it a, a good sort of calling card to unite the West that's been well, looking for something to unite? The sensitive over any use of chemical weapons, as Assad found in Syria, uh, and uh, that must be part of the explanation. But it is more than that. It is that what we have seen over the last two or three years is Putin quite deliberately using every means available to him to try to destabilize countries around the world and to try and create the impression that somehow... He is more important a world figure than he actually is. I mean, Russia is an important country, mm -hmm. and anybody who runs Russia is an important figure. But frankly, Russia is a declining power and is not going to be reversing that decline because of Putin's uh, behavior. In fact, the decline may ex exacerbate because he's totally ignoring his own domestic economy, which used to be ahead of that of China and is now languishing. I mean, Putin's power depends on his oil and his gas and his arms sales and his mineral resources, and that's all part of a Saudi-type economy, not a modern economy. So uh, I think the international community is saying, look, we've had cyber attacks, we've had interference in local elections, now we're getting your uh, people uh, trying to murder other people in uh, foreign capitals, and the international community is saying in an unprecedented way, uh, if you behave like this, it won't just be one country you can pick off at a time. You are going to get an international response and, for what is an international crime. And will Putin's response be to back off now, do you believe? Yeah, I think actually it will be. I mean, Putin is, not, you know, Putin is a complete opportunist. He's not an ideologue. He's not, he's not manic. Uh, he is a very... He's an ex-KGB man. He thinks very hard. What can he get away with? And I think he will have been as surprised as I was, as many were, by the uh, Theresa May's and, success. And isn't, and isn't that the, the, the problem? Getting together such an international response of an unprecedented kind, that will have hurt him because but, he's an ex-intelligence man and it's intelligence people who are being expelled all around the world from various embassies. But isn't it the problem that it was a surprise? Because it shouldn't be a surprise, should it, that one of our, that our NATO allies and our EU allies and in America, that, that, that they should, well, rather than being the same thing, obviously, that, that they shouldn't act in concert well, to it, defend uh, yeah, us. I mean, the fact that say, that was up in question is a big worry, isn't it? Yeah, well, what you say is theoretically correct, but the reality is even during the Cold War, uh, if one particular country was uh, uh, targeted by the Soviet Union, that country responded. It didn't necessarily get more than 
protests and condemnations from other countries. What it didn't get in the past was the kind of expulsions we're seeing today. This is unprecedented, even compared during the Cold War. And that's progress. That's not uh, something we should in any way diminish. But but if Putin does try to play this to the Russian people uh, with his new, newly elected status as the president, that that you know this is this is an attack from the West. Look, they're all ganging up on us again, like no, they I always do. The evil West. Education. I think if you want a parallel to what's happened in the last 24 hours, it's when uh, the Russians were expelled from the Winter Olympics mm-hmm. because of uh, their doping activity at a high government le- level. I think uh, Putin will be embarrassed. I think the people of Russia will be embarrassed. They're not stupid. They, they know perfectly well uh, what Putin's been up to. Uh, if it's successful, then they're quite often quite pleased. That's the nature uh, of their response. But uh, this hasn't been successful. I mean, what, what they've done is uh, possibly killed, certainly severely injured, uh, two people, and in exchange for that, they have been humiliated by the rest of the world uh, for their behavior. Now, the Russian public, quite rightly, are proud people. And the fact that their president is behaving a bit like a criminal thug in this particular respect uh, does not make people feel that Russia will be getting the respect it does deserve as a country, uh, even if the person in the Kremlin is forfeiting any right to respect in regard to his own particular behaviour. And, ju- and just finally, we've got uh, the World Cup coming up in Russia in the next three months. I understood that, you know, obviously, you know, we're not going to have royals and dignitaries and, and the like turning up, and, and probably not from many countries, but the, the, the England team and other teams will go and play. A lot of fans, though, very concerned. I have to say, I don't think Russia is somewhere where I would feel safe uh, going to now. What, what, what do you think should happen? Should the, should the, the world come together in concert and, and decide to call off the World Cup in Russia? perhaps well, stage a rival that. World Cup. We, we've yeah, got plenty of yeah. stadiums here. No, I just don't think that's going to happen, and, uh, and nor do I think that people will be unsafe in going to Moscow to watch football matches. I mean, the, uh, Putin will obviously want the World Cup to be a, uh, a propaganda success, so he will try and ensure that people, his own people do behave themselves. So I don't think that's a problem, and I don't think there's any serious prospect okay. of getting a global boycott. Uh, I think we've made a very important step uh, forward in the last 24 hours, I don't think Putin will escalate. I think he will, he will carry out some expulsions of some diplomats because he, he'll feel he has to do that. But he'll try and get this one behind, uh, behind him as quickly as possible. OK, fascinating stuff. That's Sir Malcolm Rifkind, a former foreign secretary. Very much appreciate you joining us. Thank you. 